Go figure. The one time this useless tub of lard in Roddy Telez actually has a really good game, the rest of the team can't do anything. That's that's just the Pirates in, in a nutshell. I mean, you want to keep sucking off of them because they won a fluke series against Atlanta, and then they had a, a good doubleheader against Detroit, if you want to say that. Well, look no further than this series. Once again, a series the Pirates should have won but once again, you can always count on our asshole manager to just always find a way to lose. What's going on, everybody? I'm Mac. Back with another video. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram, link down in the box below. Recording this after the Pirates drop it to the Blue Jays in Toronto by a final of 5-4. to four. Buccos drop 2 out of 3 to the Blue Jays. And we continue to fall further down in the NL Central. I mean, like I said in my community post yesterday, I typically know where a team is going to be when June comes. And it's now June 2nd. Basically, as far as I'm concerned, it's summer. And the Pirates are hanging by a thread in fourth place in the NL Central. Why? Because they can't get out of their own way and because they continue to find the most miraculous ways to blow games and to lose them. Friday night, they drop it in 14 innings to the Toronto Blue Jays, a game that saw the Pirates have the lead throughout most of the game, and then they blew leads in consecutive innings in extra innings, including being one flipping strike away from winning the game. But of course, because this bullpen can't hold a lead to save their life, and they blow games harder than Monica Lewinsky blew Bill Clinton in the office, they blew it. That, that's just how they are. They blew it. Yesterday, Saturday, an 8-1 to win over Toronto. Offensive onslaught. But if you thought that was going to be the uh, momentum shifter for this series, well, you're half right. Because going into today, this team had Quinn Priester on the mound. And Quinn Priester, to his credit, he did okay. He didn't do anything great. He didn't do anything fantastic. I'd say this is the best start that he's had all season and quite frankly the best see, the best start of his career. But that didn't matter much because once again it was a comedy of errors. Grant Cook an embarrassing pass ball that allowed Toronto to get on the board. Stratton's throwing error was absolutely embarrassing that allowed two that, that allowed two uh Bases to advance. And then this is just where Derek Shelton shows once again that he is, without a doubt, the worst friggin' manager in the MLB. And I'll even go at this point to say that he's the worst manager in MLB history. So... You leave Martin Perez out in a game against the Milwaukee Brewers not too long ago. You leave him out there for dead to give up nine runs against the Brewers. But yet, for some reason, you can't leave a guy out there to finish off a fifth inning, and he only gave up two runs. Two. And if you absolutely have to bring in a bullpen guy, why are you bringing in a righty to face Daniel Vogelback? 
This guy has absolutely no clue how to manage a bullpen. He has no clue how to manage a lineup. No clue how to manage a Major League Baseball team. No clue how to manage an Eaton Park. And yet, every single game, he goes out there, constructs this lineup that makes zero sense at all, expects the team to go out there and perform, makes the dumbest in-game decisions known to mankind, and people wonder why Derek Shelton is over a hundred games under 500 as a manager. You are not that bad of a manager by accident. That's not just because you had a team of underdeveloped players. That's not just because you had a team of players that stink, a bunch of placeholders that are going to be on your team until your farm gets called up. No, you have a record like that because you don't know what you're doing as a manager. It all starts with putting players in the incorrect order in the lineup. It all starts with not knowing when to go to the bullpen. It all goes down to leaving your starter out there way too long. It goes down to pulling your starter too early like he did for the millionth time with Jared Jones against the Mets a couple months ago where he pulled him only throwing 59 pitches, and then that pretty much took all the momentum away from the Pirates. That's why you're a hundred that's why you're over a hundred games under 500 as a manager. Not because you're going up against winning teams, not because you're going up against elite competition. It's not even like the Blue Jays are even good. They're a very mediocre team. Like I said, this is a series the Pirates should have won. But again, the lack of fundamentals, the errors, the lack of baseball IQ, the lack of intelligence altogether, that's why this team is where they are, and that's why this rebuild has failed. And it don't get easier. If, if you think it gets easier, oh, you're sadly mistaken. Because guess what happens after the Bucks leave Canada? Guess what? They have the honor of coming home to Pittsburgh to get their doors blown off by the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. Soe Otani, oh man, he's going to have a field day against this team. He may not do so well against the uh, the rotation, but, oh, man, if he gets a hold of this bullpen, it's game over. Won't even be close. So, yeah, you got the Dodgers coming to town. And then after that, you got the Minnesota Twins coming to town. The Twins are no pushover. I mean, they got off to a sloppy start at the beginning of the season, but... You know, the blue, but you know, the twins, they put together a, a very nice run not too long ago where they were winning like what, 10 games in a row? And they're right in the thick of things in the American League. You got two very good quality teams coming into Pittsburgh, and you can't even win a series against a mediocre team in the Toronto Blue Jays. Oh, well, Mac, uh, the Pirates have won series against good teams this year. Look what they did with the uh, with the Atlanta Braves. Look what they did with the Baltimore Orioles. Look what they did with the Chicago Cubs. I don't want to hear that. I don't care if they won fluke series against good teams. Let me t- Let me counter that with this. Hey, not too long ago, the Colorado Rockies actually beat the Cleveland Guardians in a series. So does that mean the Rockies are a good team? You people are pathetic. You fans that have this glimmer of hope just because the players are young and just because they go up against young, you know, against elite competition. 
The answer is staring you right in front of your face. This team can't play baseball. They have no idea what they're doing out there. And that starts with our idiotic manager and Derek Shelton. How this guy got extended last year will never register in my mind. How this guy was warranted an extension will never will never register to me. It just never will. Can't stand what this franchise has become, man. Absolutely embarrassing. But hey, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm Mac, checking on out for the day. Have a good one, everybody.